I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting us, inviting us in this uh, very nice event. Uh, I'm Angelus Barbuts from the Digital uh, Words Institute, and uh, I'd like to briefly present in this uh, lightning round uh, this uh, interdisciplinary project, which is in collaboration with. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. That's right. Yes, yes. Hi, uh, I'm Angelus Barbuts, and this is in, uh, uh, from the Digital Words Institute. This is col in collaboration with uh, the Department of Classics, uh, Dr. Eleni Bozzi and uh, Dr. Robert Wagman. And uh, the main goal of this uh, project uh, uh, is to create a tool that uh, uh, helps the archaeologists, uh, and in particularly uh, those who study inscriptions, uh, texts that have, have been inscribed in some kind of uh, material, either stone or marble, maybe pottery, and to disseminate this uh, digital now material, the 3D inscriptions, uh, uh, as, uh, in, 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 uh, in a form of an open, open access library. So there are many ways of uh, digitizing. I will briefly uh, um, cover a little bit uh, of uh, the, let's say, the literature review, what are the other techniques, and what we have proposed for this particular, uh, for this particular uh, project. So first, I'd like to tell you what is our problem in this particular case, what we try to solve. And it's uh, one of the uh, typical techniques in uh, uh, epigraphy in order to, uh, to study ancient inscriptions is, uh, uh, of course, to travel to uh, the museum uh, that holds these inscriptions or to an ar archaeological site. But in order to do more careful study, you want to take the inscriptions with you. So a technique that has been used uh, in years now is uh, taking a, more, uh, a paper that you moisturize, paper like that, porous medium, that uh, you moisturize you squeeze it onto the surface of the, ins the inscribed surface, and then if you dry out the paper, you have this uh, imprint, this uh, impression of the inscri inscribed surface. Of course, you can fold it, you can take it with you, and there are currently libraries of squeezes like that in uh, many uh, institutions. And uh, here at the University of Florida, uh, Professor Wagman has a pretty large uh, library of squeezes. And uh, the main problem is, okay, how to preserve those, how to uh, disseminate those because having squeeze is fine, but someone needs to come to the UF and have, and have permission from Dr. Wagman to study even that. But if we had that, that piece of paper, the 3D structure online, everyone could have access to that. And also it's very interesting that some of the original inscriptions have been lost. And currently we, haven't, we have squeezes, but we don't have the original inscription, so there is uh, a lot of um, uh, work in, in, in preserving these papers. Uh, so, uh, what, uh, uh, what archaeologists do, they, in order to digitize that, they just take a picture of that. You take a picture of that and you publish it. But what is wrong with that is that you don't have the actual anaglyph. So, if, if there are spe specific indentations on, uh, on specific points of the paper uh, that may uh, hide uh, a different character on, on, on the back uh, of the original description or so something like that, you, you don't have that information through a 2D to, to uh, regular picture. And uh, wh what you can do, you can have a very sophisticated method to digitize, to reconstruct in 3D what uh, they have done in uh, Hewlett Packard Labs to digitize ancient uh, 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 models and uh, ancient uh, sculptures. Uh, however, of course, this, is, this requires a very large device. You have to carry that with you. Uh, but it, it gives you very nice uh, photorealistic uh, um, uh, relighting, if, if you want to, to study, and it has been uh, applied to, to many large uh, uh, artifacts. Uh, of course, you can use laser scanner, but uh, again, the, uh, in, uh, it, it requires expensive, expensive uh, mechanisms, and you need to carry this uh, large. Usually, it's not a handheld device; it's a large device, and uh, you need to have a lot of funding to prepare to, to create a digitization method like that. And at the end, you can extend the regular picture taking technique by a video take. You can, you can take video around the inscription and you can store the video. But again, it's, you don't have the actual 3D from, from, from the video. So we, we wanted to have something which is inexpensive, something that can be used by anyone who has inscriptions and can easily share that with the rest of the community. So what we did, we proposed the use to create a novel algorithm that uses a regular scanner. Everyone can afford the scanner. Most of the departments uh, in humanities have no scanner. So the question is how to come from this, using a regular scanner, to uh, uh, a 3D uh, quality like, 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 like that. 
So basically this image, this 3D image, is nothing else but an actual result of our technique. So how to do that? The, the actual method is, uh, uh, has been published, so if you, want, uh, if you come from an engineering background and you want to learn more about that, of course uh, it requires an understanding of a lot of mathematical games, so I'm not going to go over <laughs> that. However, it's online if you, go, if you want to visit our website. Uh, there are also nice illustrations, as you can see on the top of this uh, particular page. So more, the more details are over there. Now I'm trying to show, to show you briefly the, the intuition behind this technique. So how this technique works is uh, you scan this piece of paper, this squeeze twice, once by placing that uh, uh, perpendicular to the scanner and one like horizontally. So you have to, to turn it and, and scan that twice. Now one would expect to, to get exactly the same image out of those two scans since you, since you scan the same paper, but this is not the case. If you carefully uh, 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 observe these two images, the, the one that came from, uh, from uh, orienting this uh, uh, parallelly and uh, perpendicular to the, to the scanner, you will see that in one image on, on the, on the left-hand side, it, it comes, the lighting comes from the top. So it's light, like having the light source from the top, uh, from the, the upper side of the squeeze, and on the other one, yeah, the, the light comes from the left. So what we can do, with those two different images that depict the same 3D anaglyph, we can use some, um, uh, uh, some models, mathematical models from physics that model how the light is reflected through this uh, polish media, through a paper. Uh, this uh, reflect, reflecting model has been well studied. Uh, it, it has been approximated by Fong in his model. So this technique is called shape from shading. So based on the shading, of those two images, we can reconstruct the 3D model. And uh, this is uh, another example of this uh, uh, 3D reconstruction. So what you can do with this 3D reconstructed surface, of course, you can store it on a file, you can uh, uh, copy it, you can distribute that uh, with the rest of the community. This is an example. You can zoom as much as you want, you can rotate. You can, instead of, of uh, showing the 3D uh, inscription, you can show the height map so in that particular picture, what you see, the, the, the darker the, 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 the pixels in that image, the, the deepest the point is inscribed. So you can, you can convert that in the, in the form of a handwritten uh, paper, where the, the darker points actually uh, correspond to the, the letter. So uh, if you want to publish uh, an inscription, it's a very nice form of uh, publishing that way. And of course, you can play with material properties for artistic purposes. You can do whatever you want with this 3D model. So far, what, what we have seen is this novel digitization cost-effective technique, but we, what, what, we, uh, what we did, we, we wanted to, uh, to do a post-processing, since we have now a large collection of squeezes digitized, we can do a post-processing uh, steps. We can segment using an automated technique the letters. We can then group them into the sa same letter categories. For instance, this is all the, the, the category, the group with all the alpha characters, and then, Within a group, uh, the computer automatically can uh, register them with each other. Uh, they can uh, rotate them properly, uh, scale them. So based on uh, the degree of rotation and scale, we can have some uh, nice results uh, of, uh, regarding the variability of the lettering techniques. Now, this method will have been studied. These are some examples of scanned squeezes. Uh, we did the 3D reconstruction. Here you see the examples of 3D reconstruction and uh, some details here. You can segment, as I said, you can group them. If, uh, this is uh, an example of the statistical result where it shows that from all these epsilons, two particular epsilons are completely different than, than each other. <coughs> there are two of them grouped together differently from the rest of, of the other because the horizontal line of epsilon does not, does not touch the, 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 the perpendicular on the left side of the, the epsilon as the rest of this. So what, what this tool can, uh, what this tool does, uh, assist the, the archaeologists to do this uh, uh, research with uh, their own inscriptions and uh, come to conclusions that re required uh, many years of study before this. Uh, recently we got funding from the National Endowment for Humanities for making this project public and in less than two months from now we, we expect to have this as an online open access tool where if you have squeezes you can use your own scanner, you can digitize them with one-click buttons, 
Uh, it's very uh, easy to use. This is an example of our user interface and will be hosted uh, in, uh, in a server uh, in the Digital World Institute and the Department of Plastics at the University of Florida. If you want, there is an on online demo. You can, uh, you can Google us. You can Google Digital Epigraphy University of Florida. And uh, I will be happy to answer any questions uh, later on the, on the question ground. We have uh, some off-prints of the, of the papers and uh, we can show you the, the, the live demo. Thank you very much.